absolutely hate this part of the year. It is the worst part of the school year for me and I drag my feet doing it every year. But this year, this year I changed that. This year I got it done, but man, I hate doing this stuff. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mandy the Handmade Homeschooler. Today, I'm gonna to tell you all the things that we do at the end of the year that I hate doing. I hate doing this stuff so much. So maybe it's because I'm just like really disorganized. I don't know. Maybe because the older I get, the more disorganized I tend to be. I don't know. I don't wanna say it's because I'm lazy. I'm not lazy, but I just really hate doing this. It's just the paperwork part. I love the beginning of the year organization, but man, by the end of the year, by like, cause it's June right now, we just finished school. We just finished school last Friday. It is Tuesday. And this is my second day officially of summer. And I finished it. I am so proud of myself right now. Like you don't even know. I am so proud of myself for getting this done. Okay, so I have a rule in my homeschool. I cannot organize the stuff for the coming year until I finish the organization of last year, which specifically I am referring to getting all the paperwork done. Now there's not a whole lot to do. Okay. For my state, I, I will say that there's not a whole lot that I need to do, but I'm one of those people that is like over prepared for any situation. Maybe it's because I'm a military wife and it's just been like ingrained in me for 20 years. Um, you know, it just tends to happen when you're married to the military, but it just makes me feel safer. So I'm going to show you guys some of the things that I do at the end of the year. And chances are you probably have to do at least some of this type of stuff, unless you have, you live in just one of those crazy states where you don't have to do anything. But I have always done these things and I try to be organized about it. So the first thing that I have to do, okay, the first, the very first thing that I have to do and that I try to stay on top of throughout the entire school year is my children's transcripts. And I only have one child with a transcript right now, but that is probably the most important thing to me right now. I have two running transcripts because we have one for the cover school that I don't have to do anything for. And then I keep a personal one for myself. I know I'm like way overkill with things, but just, I don't know, ignore me. I have anxiety. I keep a transcript for my son and um, he's in 11th grade. He just finished 11th grade. He's going to go into 12th grade. So I am doing his transcript and I just finished that yesterday. So at the beginning of the year, I fill out all of the classes and then at the end of the year, I put in all of the grades and then I calculate the GPA, which is what I did yesterday. I spent like an hour going back over his transcript, filling in everything, putting in his final grades and figuring out his GPA and we got that all done. So one of the things that he has, and both of my children have one, is this three ring binder. Now this binder is like their entire school career, okay? And each, each section gets a little tab and behind the tab is the entire year's worth of stuff. So there's 12 tabs obviously and everything important goes in this thing. So I'm not talking about schoolwork. Their actual schoolwork goes in another binder that I will show you. But this binder is all the really, really important things. This is the attendance record. This is um, their stuff from their cover school. And it's also their state mandated standardized test that they have to take every single year. So if there's any question, I just hand them this folder and be like, there you go. Here's their, here's their entire school career. You can double check it to make sure that I did everything right. So everything is in here for each of my children. I have, this is for one child. I have another one for another child and I update it throughout the year as needed. So I updated this folder and I updated my child's transcript. So those two things are extremely important and his transcript will go in here. And then I will get his like official one when I need it from the cover school as well. But that transcript is really, really important. And I try to stay on top of that as much as possible. I, you know, make updates to it several times a year. I make sure that everything is where it needs to be. 
and of course calculating the GPA which goes along with the transcript so with the GPA um, I know a lot of people might be like me and, and be wondering how in the world do you calculate a GPA there are actual GPA calculators online you can actually go on Google and use a GPA calculator I found it was just easier to do it myself I got the GPA all done and updated and I'm very very happy with everything so I think my my son was very pleasantly surprised too he worked very hard in the last couple years so he deserves every single bit of that but yes having all of that done is really important to me and keeping up with that is very very important so another thing that i do is i add in any testing and scores so in their personal binders we have their standardized tests that they have to take at the end of the year every single year and i log that into um oh our state educational website like we have to like log in the day that we test so i update that and then if they take any additional testing so like your high schoolers act sat that type of thing go ahead and put those scores on their transcript i for my personal transcript i am just using an excel sheet or the mac equivalent to excel i don't even know what the, what is it called numbers i think it's called numbers i use the excel type of thing and i just go in there and and fill that in i add in any of his test scores we're actually waiting he should get a test score on the 14th because he just took his sats so on the 14th we will have his sat score so i'll go back into his transcript and put his sat score in there so then it's portfolio time after i do official paperwork it's portfolio time okay so i use these big folders like this now i have gone back and forth on the best way to do this but it was one of those things that i started it this way and to go back almost 10 years of schooling and fix it kind of overwhelms me a little bit and i have no desire to do that so this is how i've done it i'm not saying that this is the best way to do it and i kind of wish i would have just um had one binder for each kid but this is the way that i did it because i wasn't thinking ahead i have one binder for both kids for one school year so i divided it by school years i write the name of the school year on here i know it's not pretty it's it's not pretty i i don't have my craft cutter anymore or anything just roll with it i just sharpied it on the edge and then on the inside i divide this thing in half this thing is huge okay these are very large um the first half of it is for one child the second half is for the other child and i put dividers in for each subject so i have a subject folder for language arts i have one for math i have one for science i have one for history and then i have the elective section and i take work from the beginning the middle and the end of the school year and save it for the portfolio now other than just random work because honestly like especially when they're young there are so many worksheets you know like we were a becca users there's like worksheets galore you have worksheets coming out of your ears sometimes with different types of curriculum i pick ones that i really really like and that i feel have a good sampling of their work I want to have like a good representation of what they have done throughout the school year so in addition to that okay one of the things that i do is i save all the tests because i feel like that's the most important piece is the test so like here is their apologia test booklets that they used this year so this one is marine biology this one is the general science and we when it was test day for them they just i i didn't even pull it out of the book i kept their book and i would literally just hand them their test book and they would flip to the page and do it and just keep it in here we did not tear them out so at the end of the year i just have these organized test sheets and i'm going to put them right into the portfolio so i can do that however i want i can clip it in there i can you know put it into the um the little folder the little built-in folder i can do that i can tear them out and hole punch them i mean there's a ton of different ways you can do that but just do whatever works do what works guys but i have found that that is just the easiest way for me to keep a good sampling of all their tests just keep the tests i feel like that's a good indication of how they're doing and 
with things like IEW, with writing. Take samples from the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, and the end of the year, and that way you can really see how they've progressed too. There's, a, there's so many different things you can do with portfolios. Now I know some states require portfolios and they may have their own rules for what they want. Follow your state regulations always. Now the last thing that I do, seems kind of obvious, but books. I have to go through the books. Now this part I haven't done yet. I actually need to do that probably this week so I can make room for the new books that are coming in. But I put, I make two piles, okay? One pile is the get rid of pile, whether that is going to be through donation or taking it to the used homeschool store for credit. I don't know yet, I haven't decided. Um, and that's my youngest child's books because I don't have anybody to pass those on to. He's you know, the only, the, he's the last child. So his books automatically go in that pile unless I want to save it for some reason. My oldest child's books, I always save to pass down to the younger student because that just makes the most sense. And even if we don't use it, even if we don't end up using it, I save it. And then when he's past that age, even if I haven't used it, I'll just, if I haven't used it, I'll just donate it or whatever. But I save all of the oldest child's books for the youngest child because it saves me money and a lot of times I end up reusing those books. So I still have to organize this room and I need to make the two piles of books. One pile is going to be my oldest child's books that are going to be passed down to the youngest and I'm going to have to put those away. I'm going to have to like find a storage solution. I'm kind of running out of space. So I need to find some kind of storage solution and do that. Now my youngest child, his books go into the donation pile a lot of times. So I'll either give those away to people that I know who need them, or what I'll do is I will take them a couple hours west of me to this homeschooling store where you can give your curriculum books and you can get credit or you can get cash. Um, and it's a great way for me to like go into the store, look at some homeschooling books and save some cash too at the same time. So that's typically what I do there. So I really need to go through everything we have here and I need to organize that. That I have not done and it's getting like really full in this room. So every summer I have to do this before the new curriculum comes in and it's starting to come in and I'm starting to have just like piles of things on the floor and it's not looking good. So I need to get that done. And then we will be all done and set for the new year after I organize the new stuff on the shelves. But as of right now, it's it's a mess. <laughs> but I got the hard thing done. Like I did the hard part. This th the hardest part was all the paperwork. But it's really important. It's it's like super important to keep the stuff as organized as you can, just in case you ever need it, just in case you're ever questioned for state regulations to make sure that you're following the law, that type of thing. So. Always check your state regulations. Always make sure you're following, you know, what your state has outlined for you. And then you can have fun the rest of the year. <laughs> but sadly, this is the thing that I hate the most about homeschooling is just the paperwork is kind of on me and I'm not the best at like paperwork stuff, but I feel like I've got a handle on it. Like when I, I made these a couple years ago and this has like saved my life with the really important things like I feel like I've got a I've got a good grip on everything now so I have their portfolios and then I have their individual binders that have all the important things and I really like this I like this system that I have come up with and I feel like everything is is good to go in here and I'm almost done homeschooling this child it's it's this child's last year of homeschool coming up so his folder will be complete at this time next year. And I'm just, uh, I'm trying to figure out how I feel about that. I don't know. So tell me your system down below in the comments. I would love to know how you organize things at the end of the year. Do you do it all throughout the year? Like, do you keep your portfolio updated throughout the year? Or are you like me and you like wait till the last minute and do it all at once? It's probably not the best way to do it, but you know, I just, I don't think about it. I don't know, like I do not think about stuff like that at, in the middle of the year. I, I think about it at the end of the year when I have to do it, so. Um, queen procrastinator over here. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy homeschooling.